These pictures, just released by the War Department, show the execution of three German spies captured during the German counteroffensive in the Ardennes. They had infiltrated behind Allied lines in American uniforms. By ancient rules of war, they faced the firing squad. At Bruxall Prison in Germany, American military police bring Johannes Seipel to the gallows. With five other Germans, he has been condemned to hang after due trial for the murder of six American aviators forced down in Germany. Friedrich Wurst, another of the gang who took the American prisoners of war away from their military guards to beat and kill them. Philip Gutlich. This is the official military record of the executions. Josef Hartgen, leader in the murders, is executed last. Near Mount Fujiyama, priests wait at the burial place of Emperor Hirohito's father. The emperor comes to report to his ancestors on the defeat of Japan. This visit, made only with General MacArthur's permission, is part of Japanese religious custom. The emperor wears semi-civilian court dress as he mounts to the great domed mausoleum. His mission is to explain the presence of American soldiers on Japan's soil. Hirohito's last previous visit was to report the Pearl Harbor attack. Today, his ancestors learn of Japan's utter defeat. The Palace of Justice in Nuremberg, Germany, once the holy city of Nazism, becomes the setting of an epic event. Here, under the vigilant eyes of Allied military police, the 20 most important surviving members of the Hitler gang go on trial. The attention of all the world is centered on this city and this scene. High representatives of France, Britain, America, and Russia form the tribunal. They will judge the ringleaders of a conspiracy that brought war to all the world for their crimes against peace and humanity. Phones connected with an elaborate translating system enable judges, lawyers, defendants, and spectators to follow the trial in German, French, Russian, or English. The chief of the Germans' defense council addresses the court. Vor Beginn der Sitzung über die Frage des Verkehrs zwischen Verteidiger und Defendant während der Sitzung. Each of the defendants has his own counsel. Meine Bitte, die ich für die Gesamtverteidigung äußere, geht also dahin zu bestätigen. Prisoners Schacht, Seiss Inquart, von Papen, Dönitz, and the rest of the 20 are led by Hermann Goering. On trial for their lives, they seem less than supermen, especially Rudolf Hess, who at first tried to persuade Allied doctors that he is insane. Britain's Lord Justice Lawrence addresses the, the defendants. defendants to plead guilty or not guilty to the charges against them. Uh, they will proceed in turn to, the, to a point in the dock opposite to the microphone. Hermann Wilhelm Goering. Reichs Marshal Goering, cold-blooded planner of international plunder, torture and murder, now arrogantly attempts to take advantage of the court procedure. Bevor ich die Frage des Gerichtshofes beantworte, ob ich mich schuldig oder nicht schuldig bekenne, 
I informed the court, the, the court that defendants were not entitled to make a statement. You must plead guilty or not guilty. I can not mich im Sinne der Anklage nicht schuldig. Not guilty. Rudolf Hess. Once the third ranking Nazi has parachuted down over England early in the war. Nein. That will be entered as a plea of not guilty. Joachim von Ribbentrop. Ich kenne mich im Sinne der Anklage für nicht schuldig. Not guilty. Uh, Wilhelm Keitel. Ich bekenne mich nicht schuldig. The Chief of Staff pleads innocent. Next, Alfred Rosenberg, philosopher of Nazism. Not guilty. Julius Streicher. Nicht schuldig. Not guilty. Hermann Goering tries again to make a statement, but is firmly dealt with. <coughs> you <coughs> are not entitled to address the tribunal, except through your counsel at the present time. United States Supreme Court Justice Robert H. Jackson opens the prosecution's case. The privilege of opening the first trial in history for crimes against the peace of the world imposes a grave responsibility. The wrongs which we seek to condemn and punish have been so calculated so malignant and so devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored because it cannot survive their being repeated. That four great nations, flushed with victory and stung with injury, stay the hand of vengeance and voluntarily submit their captive enemies to the judgment of the law is one of the most significant tributes that power has ever paid to reason. Documented in full from thousands of sources and attested to in the blood and suffering of millions, the case of the United Nations against Nazi Germany's leaders moves ahead.